All right. We are. Hey, good morning. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> uh, I know there was, there was some watching. Hey, good morning. Those watching on Facebook Live, they were like, some of, you know, when you're home all day and you can just go in or out or sleep if you want to. You stay in your PJs all day, work from home, and, and you're on conference calls and you're really only dressed from the waist up. And, uh, and as long as you don't jump up and they won't see that you got pajama bottoms on, that's, that's, that's the life, ain't it? But that gets old. That would get old real quick, I could imagine. I, I, I didn't get to experience that because for the two weeks that they furloughed us at work, uh, my wife had a honeydew list that, my goodness, <laughs> and uh, I, I, it's a crazy thing. Uh, I learned that, you know, I could take items off of that honeydew list, and I thought, well, what is this doing on my list? I, so I would, that's probably her right there. Quit talking about me. So uh, I would take things off my list, and I, I started her a honeydew list. And I, and I noticed that the things that I put on her list were appearing back on the bottom of my list. So I, I just gave up, and uh, I just gave up, and I, and I did them, and uh, most of them. But it is fun to, it's fun to have fun in church. It's good to see all of you today, all of you who are watching on our Facebook Live. We're, we're absolutely glad to have you, and uh, I'm proud that you chose to, to join us on a Wednesday. I'm gonna, uh, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to find myself a, a scratch pad, and, uh, and then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take prayer requests first. Yo, hang on. Tell I got whistle bit. <laughs> he gave the thumbs up before I was ready. Y'all have a good week. Good week so far. How many did not have a good week? Yeah, some are like that, aren't they? Yeah, it's good that you that you're here today. It's good to get a. a, a it's like a refreshing. You know, when, when uh, you have that break in the middle of the week and you're able to get into the Word and, and just to get around brothers and sisters in Christ and just to fellowship, it's, a, it's just an awesome time that, that you're able to do that. And it is, for me, it's, a, it's a refreshing. I don't know how many times that, you know, that I've, I've left work on a, on a Wednesday and, and thought, man, I am, I'm tired. You know, I'm tired from the week or the day or the heat or whatever it is. And and uh, it just never fails that when I get in, in the presence of the Lord and just begin to worship or just begin to pray or just begin to lift up His name, within a short period of time, I'm encouraged. I don't even realize that I've made that transition from the state I was in to just being encouraged in the Lord. And sometimes uh, you got to encourage yourself. Uh, sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. And sometimes it's always cool when you can remember back when. You know, remembering those things that God has done for you in the past when you find yourself in an in a, in a old situation, in a familiar situation, in a new time in your life, and, and going through some, some stuff that you had thought you were done with, and here you are back facing the same kind of mess, and, and uh, you can take comfort that the same God who saw you through that is the same God who's going to see you through, through this right now. And, uh, and he's, and, you know, it's kind of like the, the title of today, you know, uh, Christ. Christ Jesus is Lord, period. And uh, we're going to kind of talk about that later. And, uh, and, it, and it comes from a text that I, I was going to do, a, uh, you know, kind of just do a Bible study out of, out of Colossians chapter 2, and I didn't, in 2.6 is where I wanted to start, and uh, I didn't even get out of 7. So <laughs> we're going to get the meat off the bone today. And then maybe in the future we kind of tossed around the idea of, of uh, setting a table up front and just bringing trail hand Bible study to the barn and, uh, you know, and just have a group of men sitting around the table and, and you know, we just do a Bible study. Maybe even we, uh, you know, the women's team sit around the table and, and they lead in a Bible study and then maybe even uh, 
trail hand by trail hand groups, uh, the leaders get up around the table and, and they lead us in a I we kinda tossed it around a little bit and we'll see we'll see where that where that goes. You got any any prayer requests today? Yes, ma'am. Uh, pray for the women in my office. We now have COVID. Nah. Yep. They just closed today. Uh, she's home sick. Okay. She uh, she said pray for the women in their office. They had their first positive case of COVID, and so the lady is home. She is symptomatic, and just want to continue to lift up lift up that family. You can lift up Crosby too. We're up to 21 cases, and and uh, you know once and it's mostly isolated to a to a particular particular shift. It's, it's not widespread. It's mostly isolated, and but you know those. Those folks need uh they certainly need our prayer. Skip. Yeah, I'd be lifting up Skip's son, you know, after seventeen years in the same job, he's he's uh, looking for one now. And that's that's pretty tough. It's a pretty tough spot to be in when you thought, you know, this job is the one and it turns out that you're looking for one. And so we'll we'll be lifting we'll be lifting him up. What's what's his name, Skip? Chad. Chad. Y'all lift up Chad for a job. Good job. Good job. Yes. Promotion. Yes. Yeah. Heck yeah. I don't want no settling job. I had a good job. I want a better one. <laughs> I want a good job. I want a position. James never gave me a position. He just gave me more jobs. Honestly, I'd mess with James all the time, and I never actually worked directly for him. <laughs> I worked for his buddy Jimmy, and I think Jimmy took lessons from James, so that's how come I can blame James. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Tony. Yeah, she said pray for Tony for a job. And then an update on Tootie. Miss Tootie has surgery today, and she's doing really good. And Bob Christie had a procedure a week ago, two weeks ago. Friday week. Mm -hmm. And just pray for him for strength. And then uh, for Joy Malden's granddaughter, uh, Kirsten, uh, there's COVID in, in their place as well. So we want to. Want to lift up that group? Yes, yes, sir. What's his name? Jim. Jim had open heart surgery last night. Oh, and they had to go back in and do some more work. So we want to lift up Jim. Uh, he's undergoing it's bad enough to go through it one time, and then you got to go back, and they crack that rib cage open again. And so, y'all want to continue to lift up Jim, young man. There was another. Yes, ma'am. Dana. Lift up uh, Miss Dana. She's uh, battling cancer, so we want to lift up Miss Dana. Uh, just it's been a two-year fight, and she's she's doing the best she can and and struggling with it. Troy.
And remind me, Don, Don's situation. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Carla also has cancer. Uh, she has surgery tomorrow, so we want to lift her up. And then also Don uh, Strasniski. Don S has cancer, and uh, he's been in the hospital the last 14 days, and and uh, having a tough time with it as well. We want to lift up. Uh, Don and Carla. Yes, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. plant went to 100% masks everybody all the time except for eating I completely understand short tempers and whoo it's been something I want to pray for men and fences and then peace not just for our nation but also our local community as uh, more mandates are put in place that really 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 get us out of our comfort zone and are extremely uncomfortable and don't like them I don't like it at all and uh, it is as hot as Hades and I got this cotton mask, and I'm breathing hot air, and tempers get to flaring, and so really, <laughs> uh, I just I just want my testimony to be solid, because I sure get irritated with all that, and glasses fog up, and then I got heated, and uh, uh, breathing hard, and sucked a piece of that fur from my mask down my throat, went to coughing, now everybody cleared out like I had the COVID, I so it's just it's a mess it's just a mess yes ma'am That's good. Yeah, you bet. Four years, just a little bit yep. You bet. Thanking God for, for health. Right. Praise God. And then also Jamie. Jamie had back surgery. We want to continue to lift her up. And and then if there's a, she had an unspoken request. And if there's anybody else here who has an unspoken, just shoot your hand up. And and uh, I see y'all all over. And we want to, we want to pray for that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Bob. Mm hmm. Ooh. Yeah. All right. You bet you. Mm. We want to lift up Jimmy Fears. Um, he had he had surgery and fell and busted a stitch, and we want to lift him up. And then uh, Bob as well as he undergoes uh, treatment. All right, let's go to the Lord. Father God, we praise you and we thank you as the way maker. Lord, I thank you that you are the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. And Lord, I thank you that you are the way in the wilderness. I thank you, Father, that you lead us and you guide us when I, we look out and. It looks hopeless, and our situations look bleak, and it's hot, and it's dry in the, in the test and the trials that we go through. But I thank you, Father, that you are more than enough. I thank you, Father, that you show the way. 
I thank you, Lord, that you are a refreshing in the wilderness, Lord, that you are an oasis in the middle of a desert. God, I thank you for the great work that you do in tough times. I thank you, Lord, it seems that we're going through tougher times. That's when you press in even closer. So, Father, every one of these on this list, Lord, so many, so many have had cancer, and so many have, are battling cancer, so many are battling surgeries, so many, Lord, uh, we just uh, who, who are just going through these these uh, these things and all these unspoken requests, Lord, that, that we just don't even want to talk about. And, Father, I just pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and all these who are sick with COVID, and God, these ones who need a job, Lord, I pray that you do an extraordinary work in their lives, that they don't just get a job or just any old job. But, God, I pray that that you uh, your will be done, and it's the job that will bless them, meet the need, and they'll give you praise. And every one of these, Father, I just thank you and I praise you that, that through every circumstance, Father, I know that you are able to do bigger and better than we could ever imagine. And, Father, I'm praying for healing where healing needs, needs to take place. God, I pray that that you draw close, that we feel your presence, and that you lead those that are sick and oppressed, that you lead them out. And, God, we're praying for peace in our community, peace in our community, Father. I thank you, Lord, for just that spirit of peace to, to just fall over uh, Harrison County, spirit of peace to fall over Gregg County. And I thank you, Father, for the work that you do. And, God, when, when uh, O Slick tries to pull us into a confrontation because someone else is acting ignorant, God, I pray that you speak to us quickly before we have an opportunity to open our mouths and ruin our testimony. God, I pray that you speak to us quickly and that we hear your voice and that we heed your direction. And I thank you, Lord, for the way that you love us and the way you care for us and the way you look after us. And thank you, Father, for all that you've done, all that you continue to do. I thank you for blessing this church. God, I thank you for the word that continues to go out and reach folks that, that we wouldn't have been able to reach otherwise. I thank you that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ continues to be sown in hearts and lives, not just in Hallsville, not just in Harrison County, not just in Texas, but it reaches outside these states and, and folks are sharing the seed of the word that we ordinarily wouldn't have even had contact with if it weren't for the situation that we're in. So God, I thank you for this situation. I thank you for opportunities that we have to do it even better. And I thank you, Father, that your will be done. I thank you, Lord, that your name be lifted up. Lord, I thank you that we look to you as our source. We look to you for direction. We look to you, Lord, to guide us. We look to you for the answers to the questions that we have. And God, we praise you that you are well able and equipped to meet every need. God, we thank you in advance. We praise you. We love you. Now, Father, I pray that you bless this worship team as they lead us in worship. I thank you, Father, that they are worshiping an audience of one. And if you give them a word to share, I pray they share it. Because we never know when someone watching needs to hear it. If someone here that's listening needs to hear what word it is. So, God, I just thank you and I praise you just for you. We are so thankful for you, Father. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. All right. Man. I'm ready. You said, you said he is the way maker. Amen, he is. So grateful for that. Y'all join in with this singing. 
If y'all just keep on playing that, and and uh, if if you need prayer for anything, I I want you just stand up right where you are. If you need prayer, and I want you to stand up where you are. And and I was reminded that um, being prayer for for Aaron, he he got a call yesterday that his grandma died. She wasn't sick, and uh, so they're got some two three week old babies and they're trying to decide what to do so y'all uh, y'all lift y'all lift him up and, and uh thank you lord and you'll see some people who are standing around that need some prayer and if you'll just go to them, and I want to wanna agree in prayer with them. thank you and we praise you for your awesome presence that's right here with us and I thank you Lord for the sweet sweet spirit that's in this place and God I thank you that as we lift up your name you lift us up and I thank you Lord that you're doing just that for these folks who are here uh, battling sickness in their body best battling desperate situations and God I just thank you that, that you are the answer I thank you Lord that you are the way maker I thank you Lord that you are the healer and God, we just thank you that you are all those things to everyone who is standing, whether it's for themselves or whether it's somebody else. God, I thank you that you are moving. You are moving in their life. And God, I pray that 
that they that they feel your presence. I pray, Lord, that you draw so close to them, Lord, that that they can smell you. I thank you, Lord, that that uh, looking forward to the day, Lord, when we can hear when we're all in heaven rejoicing and. I'm looking forward to that day where we can hear your singing voice, Jesus. I want to I want to hear you sing. I want to see you rejoice and worship the Father as as we worship with you. But until that day, Lord, we're wrapped in this flesh and we're doing the best that we can in a world that's just gone crazy. So God, I thank you for being the way maker, for being, being the peace giver. I thank you for being that the answer giver. I thank you, Lord, for being the healer the provider. I thank you, Lord, for, for, for being salvation. I thank you, Lord, for being uh, faithful. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your love. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for what you do. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had together. In Jesus' name. If you can just sing wherever you want to pick that up and just sing another piece of it and a fountain that's full of grace that flows from Emmanuel's veins it came and healed me it came and it filled me it came and washed my sin away and I will Thank you for that. Whew. Mm. Whew. Thank y'all for that. I just that was such a sweet spirit. I just wanted to hang in with that spirit just a little bit longer and and I knew there were some folks that that need a little extra touch. The title today, or this evening, with the with the time I have left, the title today is is Christ Jesus our Lord, Christ Jesus our Lord, and uh and, and I know some of this is probably something that you've heard before, and and uh anyone it's kind of like that, it's kind of like that path, you know, the seeds that were sown out on hard ground, and and uh, and I always thought, you know, that was a hard heart, you know, it was just a hard heart, and seed was cast, and and it didn't fall on good ground. It didn't fall on a heart that was ready to receive, and and I've since been convinced that it's not that at all. I think sometimes it's scriptures that we just bypass because we've heard them so much that our, that we've just become callous to those those scriptures. We just pass right over them, and and uh, you know when it's a well trodden path, you know you think about a you think about a trail, you know that's uh, that it, it or a road. You know, if it doesn't have a whole lot of traffic on it, the dirt's going to be kind of broken up. There's going to be some loose soil. But when you're traveling down a path or a road and it's packed down, that means that it is a well-traveled path. And sometimes scriptures, uh, you know, I think sometimes we we uh, we we hear them so often that we just, yeah, I know all about that. We just move on. But sometimes the Lord wants to reveal something new to you that you didn't get before and and uh, I needed this reminder. I needed a reminder that Christ Jesus is our Lord. And and uh, I heard something pretty interesting. Matter of fact, I, I I was asked a question. It's probably, I don't know, maybe been a year ago. How come it is in the Bible sometimes uh, Jesus is referred to as Jesus Christ 
and at other times he's referred to as Christ Jesus. Does anyone know the answer to that? I do. After he was resurrected, they referred to him as Christ Jesus. That was the answer I heard, so I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> and I didn't Google it. I didn't Google it. And I'm going to go with it. So y'all digging that scripture and, and, uh, and prove me wrong. I, I dare you. Man, y'all a tough crowd today. Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you got your Bibles, turn to Colossians 2.6. 2, 6. It says, Now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, and now, and now, just as, and I hung right there on those two words, just as. Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord. Just as you accept it is the same as. Just as equals the same as. So when you're looking in the Bible and it says just as you, you can also be said the same as you. It's identical. It's one correlates with the other. They are the same. Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord. How did we accept Christ? How did we accept Christ? How do we accept Christ? Anybody? Say it again. On faith. On faith. We accept Christ. We accepted Christ into our hearts. We accepted Christ into our lives by faith. By faith. How many here, show of hands, Christ manifested himself in physical form and bid you to come to him? I want to see your hand. And I want to have a conversation with you after because that's pretty cool manifest and says come and and it, it, that's an awesome thing most of the time it's by faith that we have to accept christ by faith when the we hear this we hear the gospel message the holy spirit draws us in and then it's by faith we walk i wish that that christ would would uh i could feel him and see him and and hear from him all the time and have a conversation back and forth uh, the, the way that Adam did, walking in the cool of the day. I just think that would just be awesome. And we could just stop and sit down on a bench and enjoy a Coca-Cola together, and we could have a conversation eating a Jell-O pudding pop and, uh, and drinking a Coca-Cola. I think that would be awesome. No, we don't get to do that yet. Maybe someday. Someday we're going to be spending time with him, and we'll be face-to-face, -face and he'll answer all the questions that we ever had in life if we even remember this old world after we're gone. Remember, but we'll be there with him forever. And uh, it's, just a, it's just an awesome thing. But we received Christ by faith just as you accepted. The King James Version actually says received. Just as you received Christ. We're to, we're to walk this walk. We're to accept him as our Lord, not just our Savior. We're to accept him as our Lord and Savior by faith. We're to accept him as our Lord the same as we accepted him as our Savior, and that is by faith. Romans 3.28 says, We're made right with God through faith, not by obeying the law. How so many times we get wrapped up in works. You know, uh, uh, a production-based faith, a production, we performance-based, I guess would be a better word. We get so wrapped up in a performance-based relationship with God. If I'm doing a lot for the Lord, I feel like I'm closer to Him. But if I don't do nothing for the Lord, then, man, I just don't feel close to God at all. It's not about the performance. It's not about a performance-based. He loves me when I'm doing a lot. He doesn't love me when I'm not doing enough. He loves you all the time. Matter of fact, He loved you before you did anything for Him. Before you even received Him as your Savior, let alone made him the Lord of your life. He loved you then. And I've heard some of Troy's stories. He loved him when he was <laughs> filthy talking, swabby. <laughs> Swabbing the deck out there on the ocean. Uh, he, he loved us when we were in the gutter. He loved us when we were in the ditch. He loved us when we didn't do any of those things. But we didn't love him. We didn't call him Lord. We didn't call him Jesus. He loved us even then. It didn't matter what you've done. It matters what you do. And we walk by faith. And we walk by faith. It says uh, received. 
I want to look at this word now, received. Just as you accepted or received. That is, we took the free gift that was offered. And it was salvation. It was Jesus. We, we took it by faith, but we took it. It was a free gift that was offered, and we took it. That's what that word accepted. And we took, accepted Christ Jesus as our Lord. Romans 5, 15. And, and, but there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. There is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. Huh. Generous gift, another translation says. A generous gift of forgiveness. A generous gift of forgiveness. That is the gift through Christ Jesus. Let's finish that out. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Through one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. But through one man, Jesus Christ, we were granted forgiveness. We were granted access to the Father through Jesus Christ. We were granted the greater gift. It says wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness. Wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness. You know, a gift is no good unless we open it and we use it. Until then, it's only potential. It's only potential. I think many of us, um, we suffer in our bodies. M many have even died longing for the answer to their prayers when the potential was right there in the pages. The potential was right there in the scriptures. And I wrote this down. I thought it was pretty cool. If Jesus is a gift, how can we open it? If Jesus is a gift, how can we open that gift? Anybody? Receive it? Yes, sir. How else? If Jesus is a gift, how can we open it? Open the word. <laughs> Receive that he is the gift and open the word. Open the word. Uh, if I, I want everybody to, uh, and I, I, me too, I want everybody at this time just to go ahead and stand up. We're going to stretch and do calisthenics. <laughs> All right. If you uh, did not read your Bible today, sit down. Ain't no shame. God knows. All right. If you, um, if you have not read in the last two days, if you, didn't, if you read today but you didn't read yesterday, sit down. All right. How about in the last three days, you didn't read the Word? Go ahead and sit down. In the last four days, if you didn't read the Word, go ahead and sit down. In the last week, if you didn't read the Word, go ahead and sit down. In the last two weeks, there was one day where I didn't read the Word. In the last two weeks, you didn't read the Word. In the last month, you didn't read the Word one time. So you see how critical it is that we get these reminders of how awesomely powerful and how important it is to get in the Word. You know, and I oftentimes wonder, man, why am I getting my tail kicked? I'm not in the Word enough, or I'm not reading the right thing. When I say that, I'm not saying any of the Word is bad, but there are some parts of the Word. I, sometimes we can read just for, for uh, content, and then there are other times when we read for context. There's a difference. Reading for content or reading for context? Brother, when I read the other day, I read 32 pages. Well, bless God. Can you tell me what book it was in? Well, you know that one, that one, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's a, that's content or context. Man, when you're reading for context that we were dead because of our sins and that Christ Jesus took those sins on himself and he nailed it to the cross with Christ. Colossians. Our sins are nailed to the cross with Christ and he disarmed the evil powers and rulers. He publicly embarrassed them. Colossians. That's reading for, con that's reading for context. When Satan starts to bring your sin up to you and he starts to put it right in your face and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. 
no, 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 Jack. Colossians 2.13 assures me that I was dead in my sin, but I'm alive in Christ Jesus because my sin was nailed to the cross with Christ, and it's still there. So I refuse to accept that. That's reading for context. Reading for context. I'm a, uh, this uh, story, it was, I'm glad it turned out the way it did, but there was a time in, in, uh, in my oldest daughter Jordan's life when she was, uh, she was about 16, and she just went absolutely nuts nuts and uh man she was y'all know some of the testimony she was a cutter and she started cutting herself then it was once a day once every few days and then it was every day and then it was several times a day and she got up to cutting herself with a razor blade up to 60 times a day every day and on the shoulder and it was always places you couldn't see between the toes or the shoulder or the shoulders, or the, the fingers, or the leg, or up high on the leg. It was always places where you couldn't see, and she was addicted to the pain. She was addicted to cutting. Um, lots, I just go on and on. Attempted suicides, it was running with, trying to run with Wiccan. I mean, it was just crazy. Like, what the heck? <laughs> what? Unbelievable stuff. But a cool thing, I don't know if you're praying for somebody who you think is out there messing in the dark spiritual world. I want to tell you that there is power when you pray over them, and there's not. this is not part of it, but I, I was reminded of this, that there was a wicked high priest that was knocking on my daughter's window in the middle of the night, and uh, she wanted to come with them, and they said, you cannot come with us. And she's like, what? You cannot come with us. And she said, well, why? I mean, I want to. He said, you have praying parents. You can't. He don't know us, <laughs> but God does. Uh, the, if the, the devil knows your name, the demons know your name. Now, he may not be everywhere at once, but he's got demonic forces that are assigned and that are reporting back. He, he, he orchestrating all of this. Oh, yeah, you have praying parents. You can't come with us. And uh, man, praise God for that. During this time, uh, man, when, I, when all of this came to a head, I didn't know any of this. I did not know. I got a call at work saying, you got to come home. And she's confessing all this stuff. And I'm, and I'm getting unloaded with this. And I, I went into full-blown introvert. I turned inside. Oh, this is way too big for me. Mom, you're up. <laughs> this is your job, Mom. This is it's your daughter. I take care of the boys, you take care of the girls, and here you go, boom. Well, we ain't got no sons. Well, there you go. There, she's yours. You handle it. I, I didn't know what to do. It was overwhelming. And I remember going to my bedroom, and I fell back against the wall, and I just started b crying. I started bawling and crying out to God, God, what do I do? What do we do? And I remember... Um, I don't remember if I knocked the little bedside table and the door came open. And right on top, it was a book by Mark Gregston, How to Deal with Troubled Teens. I had gotten that book for free. It was a free gift when we went and toured Heartlight three, week, three years before. And they gave us, he gave us a free gift. It was a book he had written. And I had that free gift. And I had it tucked away inside an, in, a, in a drawer and had the door shut. You know, all that potential to the answers of the problems that I was facing for the last three doggone years was right there. And I saw it, and I got it out, and I opened it up, and I looked at it, and it said, I can't quote it word for word, but it said something about dealing with troubled teens and troubled daughters. The dad is going to turn away because it's overwhelming, and the mom is going to be the one to engage. And I went, That's me. That joker just read my mail. And then I read on, and it said they have to know that you love, you have to exhibit the same love that Christ had for us in that he loves you all that he can love you. He, you can never do anything that would make him love you less, and you can never do anything that would make him love you more. He loves you all he can love you, and your kids need that from you. Whew. Man, I wiped up, cleaned up. Blew my nose, clean, got myself together, 
And I went to Jordan and I told her just that. Christ this and I this too. Nothing you could do would ever make me love you less. And nothing you can do can ever make me love you more. Jordan, I love you. She broke down crying, bawling. And through therapy, uh, a good godly counselor uh, who, who used the word and prayer and intercessory and intercession, uh, it, and it was a root. The root of that problem was, why didn't my mommy love me? So April adopted Jordan. Why didn't my mommy love me? That was the root of the whole problem that manifested. She was 16 for 15 years, and it came out. The answer to that started 13. She's starting to get crazy. 16, she was, <laughs> was, was right there. Same with the word. All that free gift of potential is right here in the word. We have to read it. We have to read it. When things are at its worst, I pulled it out. I read it. Here's the thing. I didn't just pull it out and read it. I wrote down, I pulled it out. I read it. I applied it. I applied it. And it made a difference. What was it? The words I read, the direction I was given. I applied it, and it worked. <laughs> Same with the Word. We have got to pull it out. We have got to read it, and we have got to apply it. We have got to apply it to our lives. Otherwise, we're like the, what the Word describes, is a, is a man or a woman who looks at themselves in the mirror and walks away and forgets what they look like and never do anything to change their appearance. It's the same thing with the Word. We have to know what it says. We have to apply it to our lives. Colossians 2.6. Let's go back to that one, Nikki. And now, just as you accepted or received Christ Jesus as your Lord, it says you must continue to follow Him. It wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't a, a, he, you, it wasn't a request. It wasn't a suggestion. It says we trails in. We must continue to follow him. I love that word continue. Do you remember when you got saved? Do you remember when that was, when you received Christ as your Savior? Do you remember that feeling that you got when he, you, when you remember how much, if you were like me, man, I couldn't read enough. I couldn't, I could I was in the word. I was reading. I was studying. I couldn't get enough of it. I was a true follower of Jesus Christ. You must continue 30 years later, 40 years later, 50 years later, 60 years later, you still ain't there. All that Christ intended for you to be. We have to continue to follow Him every day, all the time. I like that word, uh, as your Lord, as your Lord. That word uh, is kurios, and it is He to whom a person or thing belongs. Are we His Lord? Christ Jesus as Lord. We accept Him as our Lord. Well, if we're accepting Him as our Lord, then that means He is the He we we belong to Him. And it goes on to say that word means about which He has power of deciding. He has power of deciding. So do we um, do we belong to Him? Do we identify with Him? And not only do we belong to Him, are we allowing Him to lead us? Are we allowing His will to reside in our lives? And I, I wrote a note. How are we going to do His will when we're not in His Word? How are we going to do His will when we are not in His Word? We choose whether or not we live in obedience to Him. We choose whether He's the Lord of our life or not. We have that choice. When we live in obedience to Him, we make Him the Lord of our lives. And I, this was another little note I wrote down. When we receive salvation, think about this. When you received salvation, you are responding to the Holy Spirit. Is that true? Yep. Absolutely. When we received salvation, we responded to the Holy Spirit. When we make Christ our Lord, we're responding to the word. 
when we make Christ our Lord, it's in response to the word. Well, some say, what's the difference in Jesus being our Lord and Jesus being our Savior? Luke 2 talks about Jesus as the Savior, yes, the Messiah, comma, the Lord. He is all those things. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1, 9 through 10. It says, for God saved us and called us, called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, performance-based. He's not, he, did it, he didn't do it because we were performed well enough that we got it. He did it not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. And now he has made all of this plain to us by, appearing, by the appearance of Christ, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and immortality through the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Je the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. But saved from what? The power of death? Huh. Or Greek word thanatos, which is misery of wickedness and sin. Future misery in hell. We were saved from that. We were saved from that. So we, I, I said all that to, to, to say this, that being our Savior and, and Him being the Lord of our life, two separate things, two separate things. How can we follow Jesus Christ if we're not in His Word? How can we say that we're followers of Jesus if we don't stay in His Word? I'll finish up with this. I believe verse 7 ends in uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, is talking all about getting in the Word, all about staying in the Word. So I submitted that if we want to grow, uh, if we want to grow in Christ, if we want to uh, make Jesus the Lord of our lives, we can't make Jesus the Lord of our life if we won't get in His Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word. We can't grow in our faith outside the Word, and we can't grow in our relationship with Jesus outside of the Word. And therefore, we can't make Him the Lord of our life. Verse 7, I feel like, is driving this point home. Let your roots grow down into him. Into who? Jesus. Jesus. Let your roots grow down into him. And let your lives be built on him. Then your faith. How do you get faith? Read the word. Faith comes by what? And hearing what? The word. The word. So, if we want our faith to grow, what are we going to have to do? Read. <laughs> Read the Word. Read the Word. If we want our roots to grow down deep in Christ, how, what do we got to do? Read the Word. If we want our lives to be built on Jesus Christ, what do we do? Read the Word. If we want more faith, then, it says, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. Taught from what? Word. The Word. The Word. It's critical. And, and, and you will overflow with thankfulness. You will overflow with thankfulness. That's good stuff. There was something that a, man, a, a, a preacher buddy of mine sent me a little snip from, uh, he wasn't snippy, but he sent me a little snip from it was the Promise Keepers, 1993. And, uh, and it was a four-minute video, and it was uh, Pastor E.V. Hill. And, uh, man, he, I, I'm, I'm going to have to put a message around this because this was just good stuff. So when uh, Christ came to earth, this, I think it was in Matthew, it said that Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yeah, have y'all ever read that? So y'all, it's in there. The devil, holy, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus is all God. All God. Wasn't half God, half man. All God, all man. Being all God, he could have easily. Do you believe that he had dominion over Satan? As Jesus Christ. 
he could have easily said, boy, get the heck out of here, couldn't he? Get away from me with that stupid stuff. Quickly, quickly, easily. But because we can't do that, he didn't do it either. And I'm going to prove it. He could have done it. We agree with that? He could have done whatever he wanted to the enemy. But instead, when he was tempted, what did he do? It is written. We should be doing the exact same thing when Satan comes against us. We should be pointing right back to the Word. Jesus quoted Deuteronomy. He went back to the Word on three separate occasions when, the, when, the, when Satan himself tempted Jesus. He didn't fight in his own strength even though he is the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John said. Even though the, <laughs> Satan is having a conversation with the Word, the Word went back to the Word to defend, to, 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 to fight against Satan. So what makes us any different? Christ was showing us the way to overcome. It is written. And when Satan came back again with something different, he didn't go, boy, that's a stoop. He said again, it is written. And when, Christ, and when Satan came back again, he said, it is written. And then he said, get thee behind me, which I believe goes right back to John. If you resist the devil, he'll flee. But the point being, Christ himself, who had all the authority, who is our example, he is our Lord if we follow him. If we follow him and do what he says, if we give ourselves totally over to him and allow him to have dominion over our lives and and to give us direction and we follow. If we say that He is our Lord, then we need to be following Him. And that means that when we're attacked by the enemy, we, we use the same method that He used in the words, in the Word, and that is with the Word. With the Word. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, man, that was good. That was good. I think the title of it was Hit Him Again. Hit Him Again. Hit Him Again. <laughs> Hit him again with the word. And when he, old Slick comes back with something else, hit him again with the word. And he hit him. Notice this. Whenever Jesus uh, quoted this, the word, it wasn't that, you know, if you're hungry, why don't you, you know, you ain't been eating. You ain't ate nothing in 40 days. And, and so why don't you go ahead and turn these stones into bread? He didn't say, uh, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost, did he? What did he say? It is written, number one, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he didn't just come willy freely grab some scripture and, and apply it. He applied the exact scripture for the exact test that he was, oh, this is good now. He just, he's just revealing this to me as we're going. He applied the exact scripture for the exact temptation that was in his life at the time. All three times. All three times. That's what we got to do too. Whatever temptation is in our life, whatever test, whatever trial, whatever situation, find the scripture specifically for that that's going on in your life and apply it. And apply it. And you're going to get the same victory that Jesus Christ got. Make sense? Y'all ready to go? <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you for the opportunity that we've had, Lord, to, just to get in your word. Yes. And, uh, Lord, to, 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 to learn about the word and, 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 and the word that became flesh and dwelt among us and you, Jesus, and the power of your word and the importance of your word. And, God, we just thank you and we praise you for, for revealing things the way that you do, for giving us insight into the word. And, God, I just thank you that, that, uh, that your Holy Spirit prompts us to, to get in there and to read and not just read for content but to read for context. God, we thank you and we praise you that I want my roots to grow down deeper in you. I, I want to do what, what Colossians 2, 7 says. And God, I thank you and I praise you that I want my faith to grow. I want my roots to grow down deep into you. I want to experience wonderful grace. I want it to, to experience, Lord, uh, what it means to be forgiven on a whole nother level. God, I just thank you and I praise you, Father, for, for just taking us, taking us in our walk with you, 
uh, just just to another to a higher level, to a deeper walk. God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for for the reality of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for all you do. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you continue to do every day. We love you, Jesus. Thank you so much. It's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic, fantastic week. Men and fences tomorrow. Be, be lifting them up in prayer. Friday, game night. Be lifting that wild and crazy bunch up in prayer. Anything going on Saturday? Sunday? Oh, some of y'all shook your head no. Sunday? No. Oh, man. Church. <laughs>